Hello, hello again to another Aga Color React, and today we have another date night. Yay! Yeah. With Eric. Eric is my husband. So hello, hello. if you watched it before, you know that. Unless I forgot to mention that. You know, you never know. All the time. Watching today. today we are watching How Would Have Been the Cold War If Germany Had Won War War Two. I really think that title should be a bit different. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway, we I uh, was asked to make the reaction to it, so let's just see and how would the world would be? We would we wouldn't be together, I don't think. It's hypothetical. Well, yeah, it's you know a how I am. Hi, it's uh, no, you're stick to you, the facts. You, yeah, you're not answering <laughs> any hypothetical questions. But I'm just saying, yeah. most likely, if the war, the the Germany won the Second War, the Cold War would be different. And I'm presuming the part of Poland where I I was born would be probably under German occupation or being part of Germany. Well, if Germany won, won World War Two. I'd recommend watching The Man in High Castle. Yeah, actually, that's true as well. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much yeah. alternate actually, universe. Actually, not, not only part Reality. of Poland where I was born, the whole, whole Poland. Whole Poland, France, pretty much most of the Germany, probably. We'll see. We'll yeah. see anything now. Who knows? Okay. Yeah, let's see. Let's watch! June 1946. The Second World War has been over for a month. It started in 1939 and ended after six years of violent fighting with an armistice between the Axis, the Soviets, and the Allied powers. It happened that in December 1942, after the Japanese attack at Pearl Harbor, Hitler and Mussolini did not declare war on the United States of America. Huh. So America was never directly involved in the war in Europe. So what happened every at time in those things just comes up that basically America wasn't involved. It just kind of like proves this point to all those kind of America. So we say it was you during yeah. World War II. But I mean like it's it's very possible because without the help of America I, I definitely a lot would go differently. Oh yeah. The whole thing of if yeah. you say one word it changes everybody's future. Yeah. Well, like if you say see someone walk past you in the morning you say good morning. That changes everything. And this is why I always say uh, good morning to every stranger we're walking past. In no, the morning. that's why I look down, no eye contact, no words. Yeah, just... But you're the one who always says good morning. <laughs> yes, unfortunately. Yeah, it might so... make somebody's day, it might ruin their life. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. What were we talking about? Japanese uh, Pearl Harbor. Uh -huh. um, America didn't join Europe because Germany and uh, Mussolini didn't declare war against but America. But wasn't the United States that declared war on. No, I don't Japan. think so. Japan, yeah. Japan was part of Axis, so basically then Germany and Mussolini probably. I'm not sure now, because I'm guessing that's in implied in the video, because I can't remember now that, that part of the history, that uh, they declared uh, war in against America because Japan did it as well. And they were part of you know, Axis together. Now, why did Japan do it? Why did they bomb Pearl Harbor? Because they were already uh, Japan, I think had war. It was running in the war with China and all that, con trying conquering all that part of the world for past years, like before even war in Europe started. They were already, there was war with Russia. There was war with China. I think I'm not sure because I'm not a historian. I, I don't really remember that much, and they never taught me that much about that part of the world. But that's what I know. Well, from and what I've heard or read, uh, well, we watched the other States. videos as yeah. well. Basically, it was. Um, because they didn't want, they needed to have like, I think they were thinking about Hawaii as part of Japanese empire as well, but they wanted to kind of have clean slate, like this part of the ocean being just theirs. I'm not sure, we're gonna have to watch something. Well, from what I read, or seen somewhere, uh, the United States provoked Japan by stopping their cargo ships from helping out Germany, the Axis powers. That so, probably was in the video too, yeah. Possibly. From this guy. Yeah. So, you know, it was the United States' fault that they yeah, got you were really... Eric is really, um... Well, if you push somebody... Un unusual American. I think in, differently than most yeah, people. In America. If you push somebody, uh, what does that do? If they push back, what do you do? Do you punch them? Who provoked it? So, who started you, you know the fight? how it is the saying as well. The history is written by victors. Yes, yes, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, so, the history would be different if Germany won the World War Two. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, let's continue. Now we're speaking German, not Polish. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it happened that there were two separate world wars. A war in the Pacific between the USA and Japan, and a war in Europe. So can't really call it against the British war and Soviet war. Union. Hmm. In the Pacific, the war ended with an American victory, as in our timeline. Without the European distraction, the USA could use its full might against Japan and defeated it in 1946, using another nine atomic bombs, apart from Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Whoa! But in guys Europe, without a direct American intervention, things were different. Operation Overlord, the landing in Normandy was impossible. No Operation Torch in North Africa, the Italians were able to hold on in Libya. No American bombers over the German cities. No landing in Sicily. The Soviets were stuck somewhere in Ukraine and Belarus. The resources were enormous, but not endless. An American lend-lease in this situation was greatly reduced. The war became a gigantic and costly stalemate, and in spring 1946, everyone had had enough. May 1946. There is a peace conference in Paris, in which all the representatives of the powers involved in the European war participated. Germany has to leave all the occupied territories. I'm gonna have to, I have to say something. I have to say something in regards to that. Every time, even in this one, it's a different thing. The, the, the powers, there was like eight countries there. None of them are Polish people. They say Poland didn't exist. They didn't exist before Second, uh, First War. The, the, after the First War, we gained our independence, so Poland was back on the map. It's even here, look. You see? Hmm. Even oh. now it's actually shown it's different. I never seen something like that, obviously, because it was kinda of coming up here. But it's just like in the actual history that we know of, no one asked Poland about what Poland was after all that war. And I just thought that this is uh, ended in nineteen forty six instead of nineteen forty five, so it lasted a year longer. So after World War One. Poland, Belarus, and Ukrainian nations are established. The Baltic states are independent. Finland's borders remained as they were in 1940, as were most of the European borders in other parts of the continent. Yugoslavia was dismembered. There is Serbia and Croatia. Germany annexed northern Slovenia. Italy gained the remainder of Slovenia, Dalmatia, and Montenegro. Bulgaria gained Macedonia. Ante Pavlic is the Croatian dictator. Serbia is headed by Milan Nedic. Serbia is the only country that remains under German military occupation. Tito escaped to London. Although the Germans retire their divisions from occupied countries, most of the occupied countries remain under their sphere of influence. Hungary is now under Horthy's leadership. Antonescu is the Romanian prime minister. In Bulgaria, the nine-year-old Simeon II is on the throne. Nine -year -old the region the is the prime King. minister. Dovery Buzz Hill. Nine year old Yeah, there were there were histories like that. Like well, I know, like younger, in, you know. The Chinese dynasties and stuff. No, no, British dynasties had kids on the throne as well. British they pretty much if you kinda look down into How history did they rule country stuff, if they can understand. They didn't. They had those all that's where the all the titles are there, isn't it? The, uh, the the, the, the multiple things in war basically that they mean that there is someone he is on the throne but he have this all advisors and stuff it's like like we were watching shogun yeah, yeah. you know the the different regions yep. they did not i'm sorry in my head but that's not japan who was it what was it the little kid that was there, he was the, the, the most powerful person in the oh, country, the son. Japan. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. But obviously, he had all those, you know, the, all of those uh, uh, advisors and all that. But the same thing here. There's the same. The regent, the regent is the, the regent. It's it's in, in front of me. So the regent is someone who actually takes and makes the decisions and stuff like that in the name of the nine-year-old kid. Hmm. Quisling rules Norway. These are all pro-Axis government. Poland, the Baltic states, Yeah, here. Ukraine, you see, what did I just say? I said at the beginning, the part of Poland to where I was born gonna be under German occupation. What is here? I'm from here. Like, most of today's Poland, here, half of it, you can kind of look, because this is Poland. Oh, you can see here. Oh, you. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm gonna make this here bigger. So most of the, today's Poland, Poland goes uh, alongside the Odra River, and then it's kind of here, and then here, because that's the Kaliningrad. <laughs> That's, that's how Poland looks now, yeah? This is fictional Poland here. Although it's in the old pre-World War II uh, borders, because that's kind of like how it looks, yeah? 
And I think it was going going further down. But basically, I'm from here. Yeah, I'm German. Formerly independent. Oh. Their future was one of the main topics at the Paris conference. Hitler claimed that only a pro-German government in those countries would be able to guarantee the security of Germany, and at the end the Allies agreed to the formation of new pro-German governments on those lands, and the withdrawal of their recognition of the Polish government in Yeah, I'm not so surprised. Ignacio Ziewicz, former commander of the NSC National Armed Forces, a Polish military organization operating from 1942, is the general governor of Poland. And it's, I never Ukraine heard about is led that. by the Ukrainian National Council, consisting of 130 delegates who represent all Ukrainian lands, but with few powers. Radoslaw Otrowski is the president of the Belarusian Central Council. In France, the Germans support Petain, who remains head of the French government. In Denmark, Belgium, and the Netherlands, the pre-war governments are restored after they ensure their neutrality. Indonesia is independent soon after the war. After the agreement of the Conference of Paris, Greece is now under British influence, but there is a strong communist guerrilla. The situation in Asia. Japan loses all their foreign territories. There is a civil war in China. There is no Soviet intervention in the Far East, so Korea is united. India is independent. After the two world wars, the world is divided into three blocks. The Communist bloc, the Soviet Union, and China. The Axis in Europe, the Allies led by the United States of America and United Kingdom. A cold war between the three blocks... I how the Allies are actually black this time. Hmm. After the war, Germany is the second world power. Despite the two being the main enemies, the British Empire and the Soviet Union have not been defeated. Meanwhile, Hitler rules over most of Europe. At Hitler's side, there is Himmler, the second in command. Then Josef Goebbels and Martin Bormann. Karl Dönitz is the Minister of War. The rising stars of the Nazi party are Arthur Axmann, former leader of the Hitler Jugend, he lost his right arm on the Eastern Front in 1941, and Else Hirsch who during the war was a 20 years old captain of the Bund Deutscher Mädel, the League of German Girls. Gudrun Himmler, daughter of Heinrich Himmler, and former generals of the Second World War like von Bock and Guderian have important roles. Göring himself died of cancer in 1951. The British handed Rudolf Hess over to the Germans at the end of the war. Hitler forgave Hess, but he no longer had any important role in the Nazi party and committed suicide in 1948. Berlin has been rebuilt by Albert Speer, the main architect of the Reich. The German capital is reorganized along a central 5 km long boulevard, the Prachtallee. This boulevard also serves as a parade ground. At the northern end of the avenue, there is a square of you know that reminds me? Is that place that doesn't exist. No. Oh. <laughs> what was a place where I kind of had like a... Well, I building? think they kind of had... Yeah, it's kind of, but what they did here... One second. Because I'm that street uh, there. This one here, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I think this one, they might... I, I've been in Berlin only with you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know that much. So, basically, I think this is actually that one that we kind of seen it walked and there was something on it too. Yeah. But this really reminds me of that same big thing of Hunger Games in the capital like i gotta, I I gotta try to film. get the, get the picture of it and put it on here basically i know you did slip through the film yeah yeah but i, I was i was a big fan so basically that kind of really reminds me the moment where they kind of all of the tributes from all of the districts kind of going in and kind of riding on those like there's in one of the movies they're on chariots and stuff like that so they're kind of riding alongside the thing and people are watching them and that really reminds me of that the kind of view I wonder if they were imp uh, inspired because those plans for this actually did exist, as far as I know. I might be mistaken. I might just make. A I'm watching too much of this kind of alternate reality and history and stuff, so it just kind of like might just you know messing with my actual the actual history and stuff. But Sorry, three hundred and fifty thousand yeah. <laughs> square meters, the Große Platz. This square is surrounded by the Führer's Palace on the west side, the Reichstag's building on the east side and the Third Reich Chancellery and the High Command of the German Army on the south side. 
On the north side of the square, there is the Volkshalle, designed by Hitler himself. It's the largest enclosed space in the world, 200 meters high and 250 meters in diameter. On top of the Volkshalle, there is the Reichsadler, symbol of the Germans. Towards the southern end of the avenue, a triumphal arc, 100 meters high, had been built. The constructions were completed just in time for Hitler's 70th birthday in 1959. Berlin was renamed into Germania, but this name was rarely used. Germany has to face the discontent in the eastern countries, as happened to the Soviets in our timeline, especially the Polish. There are attacks by terrorist groups, with officials assassinated and even civilian airliners stormed in flight. In 1952, there is the Warsaw Uprising against the Polish general government and its German policies. The revolt quickly spreads and the government collapsed. Some local leaders were lynched. The Germans moved over to crush the revolution. A large Wehrmacht force invaded Warsaw and other regions of the country. Over 4,000 Polish, 300 German troops were killed in the conflict. Mass arrests and denunciations continued for months thereafter. Germany has to maintain a huge army, not only to crush revolts, but because the Soviets are still in peace, dangerous and eager to take revenge. Yeah, what's going on in the East? Great efforts have been made to build a fleet, and by 1960, the Kriegsmarine had eight aircraft carriers. Several attempts of Germanization were made in the East, especially in Belarus and Ukraine, with mixed results. The hope to colonize a third of Europe with the depleted German population, while having lost more than one million men in the war, proved to be utopian. Well, yeah. <laughs> Great Britain lost most of, but not all of its empire before 1960. India became independent in 1947, then Burma, Ceylon, the Middle East and other African colonies. Its economy is in great trouble. It had been spending all of its assets to purchase American weapons, and now Britain's war debt is a millstone around the neck of the British economy. The elections of 1946 were lost by Winston Churchill, and the Prime Minister became Clement Attlee. Great Britain is almost the only destination of the Marshall Plan. The USA is the main world power. After the war, they replaced the British Empire. Now most of the former British colonies are in their sphere of influence. There was no Soviet intervention in Manchuria. The Americans occupied the whole of the Korean Peninsula. The war solved their own economic problems, and now they are the main world economy. Truman lost the election in 1948. There were too many losses in the war with Japan, especially in the invasion of Kyushu during Operation Downfall, the invasion of Japan, with hundreds of kamikazes crashing into any landing craft, causing troops on Japanese beaches. Thomas Dewey becomes the American president, then Adlai Stevenson, then in 1960, Kennedy. However, the United States of America is a first-rate world power, but not the dominant power. The problem, more than the Soviets, is Germany. The USA comes into conflict with German mercantilism in a similar way to which they are now with China in our timeline. Germany is active in Africa and South America, challenging American supremacy in all spheres. South Africa becomes an ally of Germany. Blacks remain an underclass, as in the USA. One of the causes of the end of apartheid in the United States of America in our timeline was because the black American soldiers who fought in Europe were treated with respect in Germany, as other soldiers in Italy. And when they returned home, they refused to be second-class citizens. This does not happen in this timeline. The Soviet Union. Stalin was overthrown and executed in 1947. His popularity was eroded by what was seen as defeat in the Second World War. Stalin's death triggered a power struggle in which Khrushchev emerged victorious, and now he is the first secretary of the party's central committee. Khrushchev presided over the beginning of de-Stalinization, enactment of relatively liberal reforms in domestic policy. There are ideological tensions with the USA, but the vast majority of the Red Army and missiles are deployed along the Iron Curtain. The Chinese Civil War between the Kuomintang and the Communist forces ended with Mao's victory in 1950. After the defeat of Japan, the Soviets backed Mao. The KMT government retreated to the island of Taiwan on December 7, 1946. There is no Korean War, 
and the U.S. are reluctant in offering full support for Chiang in their final stand against China. In January 1951, the Chinese invaded Taiwan with an amphibious operation. The relationships with the Soviets are difficult. Mao admires Stalin and rejected the changes in Moscow. However, the Soviet Union and China are the only communist states in the world. They have to collaborate. Persia. The Soviet Union refused to withdraw from Persia, citing threats to Soviet security, and proclaimed the separatist Azerbaijan People's Government and the Kurdish Separatist Republic of Mahabad. Germany, Italy, and Britain sent an expeditionary force in what was seen by Mussolini as the repetition of the Spanish War. This was the only time the Axis and British troops fought together. After some negotiations, the Soviets accepted and withdrew, but they maintained the presence and an Afghan-style war continued in those lands. India follows almost our timeline. After the independence, there are tensions between Hindus and Muslims, and in 1948, British India is partitioned into the Union of India and the Dominion of Pakistan. The Cuban crisis does not happen. Obviously, there are no USA deployments of missiles in Italy and Turkey, so there is no need for the Soviets to place nuclear missiles on the island, and the Soviets do not want to risk a war with the USA with the Germans right at their gate. In Korea, the Communist Workers' Party opposes the US, and with the support of China, organizes a network of clandestine cells with a considerable following. In March 1948, it instigated a general strike, and on April 3rd, 1948, the party led a popular revolution on Jeju Island. In the suppression of the revolt, thousands of islanders were killed. An armed guerrilla struggle starts. France. After the death of Peyton in 1951, Pierre Laval, with the German support, becomes the prime minister, with full powers, with a similar governance to Germany. France is a German ally. They lose part of the empire occupied by the British, but maintains Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, and Indochina. The Algerian revolution is crushed with the help of the Germans, who send an expeditionary force, the New Africa Corps. Hmm. Mussolini is strong in Italy. After the Italian Night of the Long Knives of 1943, in which several traitors were executed, Siano and Badoglio first. The decolonization of the former European colonial empires is slow. In 1960, Italy, Spain, and Portugal still have their colonies. The level of technology in the 1960s is slightly more advanced than in our timeline, particularly jet airliners, televisions, and computers. The space race, the competition for the space between the three Cold War rivals, the Soviet Union, the USA, and Germany, for the moment is won by Germany thanks to their superiority in ballistic missile technology. Not surprising. The Germans yeah, launched the, the first artificial <laughs> earth satellite, yeah. the Siegfried 1, on October 4th, 1950. Without the German scientists, the United States can do anything. The same Russia. Russia took a lot of German scientists as well, but no one really talks about it. Well, look at this. Did he say the name? Because this looks like Gagarin. <laughs> oh, look, wait, Gagarin was born in Ukraine. First man in, in space? Okay, you probably. American, American history? Yeah, uh, but World no, history. Well, you know, you, you <laughs> never, they never taught you who actually went first in space. No, Russia Americans. died. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm strong. <laughs> that was first moon. man in the moon, first man yeah. in space. No, 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 no. Gagarin was first one in the space. Oh, yeah. But. I think he was actually, yeah. One second. Did he say the name? The Germans launched the first artificial Earth satellite, the Siegfried 1, on October 4th, 1953. Then sent the first human to space. Peter Miller. Peter Muller. Looks on like April that 12th, 1957. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The German space program is still based at the rocket testing facility at Pinemunde on the Baltic coast. The Holocaust happens in the same way as in our timeline. More than a million Jews died during the Second World War, but this massacre is effectively buried in history oh, in a conflict that caused 70 million deaths. Racial segregation and apartheid practices are That's actually quite a low number of Jewish people that died in Holocaust during the war. Because I'm pretty sure that was more. There was only, like, there was two million of Polish Jews that were killed during Holocaust in our timeline. That's just from Poland. 
and war about all the people that were shipped to all of those uh, concentration camps from other countries as well. That's much more. I think there's the number kind of closing in for like six or seven million. So one million, it's that not not much really. Along with nationalism and pride in their heritage and culture. After the Second World I'm War, I'm not saying tens of no, okay, that sounded terrible. <laughs> not that much. I mean, compared <laughs> to like yeah, yeah. To, to taking into account the that, that Germany won. Yeah, that number should be higher, but it's just like you said, it's just like being... Some Jewish refugees attempted to enter Palestine by ship. Most of the ships are intercepted by the Italian and German Navy and by the Royal Navy. The refugees are rounded up and placed in detention camps in Cyprus or Libya. There will be no Israel, but after the British evacuation of Palestine, the Jewish insurgency rises up with a series of widespread guerrilla raids. After the USA, other countries developed nuclear weapons. Hitler never liked the atomic technology, and despite the high quality and power of the German warheads, the number of their nukes remains limited. The Germans tested their nukes in Ukraine, underground, and in Libya with Italian concession. The United Nations will never be founded, and nobody will miss it. December 1947. In Vietnam, a war begins between French forces against the Viet Minh, led by Ho Chi Minh. The conflict rapidly turns into a conventional war between two armies equipped with weapons supplied by Germany, the United States, China, and the Soviet Union. General of the Vietnamese Army uses efficient tactics of guerrilla warfare, convoy ambushes, to impede land and air supply deliveries. In May 1954, the French are decisively defeated at Dien Bien Phu and start to quit Indochina. Waiting for new elections, Vietnam is temporarily cut in half. Ho Chi Minh controls North Vietnam. The South is under Bo Dai, the Vietnamese emperor. Cambodia and Laos are independent. But France has strong ties with Germany, and the German headquarters have the same idea as the CIA and the Americans had in our timeline. Bring part of French Indochina under their control. Hitler is aware that if Germany wants to remain a world power, they will need more than influence in Eastern Europe and a few African land holdings here and there. They need to extend their influence in military bases all around the planet. During a meeting at Verona with Mussolini, Hitler says, we need to make our world power credible, and Vietnam looks like the place. October 1955, the Germans are on the move. The South Vietnamese Prime Minister, Ngo Dinh Diem, with German support, deposes Emperor Bao Dai a more authoritarian government is created. By 1959, the German military presence in South Vietnam is raised to 80,000 military personnel. Three German aircraft carriers are deployed near the Vietnamese coast. Some of the best German Waffen SS units are moved to Saigon. A war is starting. Mm. What does we think? talking about the United States, uh, what would happen if the Confederacy won? won? Oh, wow. Would there still be slavery? Oh, yeah. People's eyes on the United States would be completely different. You know, it would be strange times. Remember, what it means if the Confederacy wins, like, takes over all of those uh, states? Well... You see, I don't know yeah. much about it, and you always say you didn't really pay attention in history lessons. No, no, no. I didn't pay attention in government. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have the House of Representatives and the Senate from each state. Yes, but how many how many states was then taking part in the war? Because there wasn't the United States didn't look like they do look now. No. Yeah. So was the territory that was after buying territories or before buying the territories and all that? The Louisiana territory that's a massive chunk of America that was bought. California. Then you have California that was war was with Mexico. Question for Google. Well, you can Google it now. <laughs> yeah, it'll not be too. It'll long be long. interesting. Yeah. yeah, and we got some more to go. Yes. Times it. Oh, it's twenty past. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think? <sighs> hypothetical. Eric doesn't do hypothetical questions. It's, it's not a hypothetical question. It's asking my opinion. Yes, I'm asking you for the opinion. What do you think about it? Either? I don't hurt anybody's feelings. Yeah, well. It could have been better. <laughs> <laughs> so if you made this video or you recommended the video, I apologize. I know it's more of like, a, oh, this could happen. This could happen. 
I mean, the thing is, to you, it's probably it's not. I, I think that was kind of more engaging than the ones that we did before. When literally there was kind of like a list of five uh, battles and all that. That was still kind of interesting, but if, you don't, if you're not interested that much in history and you don't, don't know what battles were happening when during that war, you don't really see the difference. Because someone could just show me that video and I just literally, without the context, and let's say just show, or I would just take it as that's what happened. Because yeah. pretty much that's kind of like it was. Like you can't really change everything t totally, yeah. We should do one. Yeah. Um, Roswell, they didn't shoot down the aliens. The aliens fought. Everybody. So there's no Why Area 51. Like there's that. no Area 51. Uh -huh. Aliens took over the United States. No, Alternate well, history, folks. I in read, the making. I read a short story in one of those books that I got. That was like only a few months ago. And basically, it was that they were doing some kind of um, testing in the air or something like that with the balloons and stuff after the war. And they just took some, some guy from like a prison, like he was sentenced for something in army so he was in prison so he got him in and then they got two like Chinese really small guys to do and that's what the bodies were they basically start I don't know I can't remember exactly I'm reading really too much but I was kind of like never, it was, never. that's what happened in Roswell apparently according to that story it was a short story and it was science fiction so nobody will ever know yeah. unless you well, well I mean you was would, it occupier 51 no I mean <laughs> where, shoot you. where in Roswell, Roswell files actually released question for Google oh. Stop, stop answering <laughs> my questions with questions. Okay, anyway, that was that was interesting because uh, kind of shows it's like the one that I did the first time to that to the first video that I watched from that uh, channel. It was about how the world would look if I'm, if Germany won. It was something about the, how the music was. You know, like the one that I remember was that the ABBA would never uh, exist as it was. Yeah, yeah. and there's differences and all that. Of course, so the, like I said. Yeah. The world would be different. You could change somebody's future simply by saying hi. Yeah, that's true. That's where I'd you see, try to keep myself. Maybe you should go back in time and just say hi to Hitler. Actually. You never know. It could change. I wouldn't mind. The thing about going back in time, though, we talked about this before. Mm. As the Earth's rotating, it's also expanding. So oh, you have to know. Moves. Moves, yes. So you have to know the exact location of the Earth where it was back in that day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you, that's. The maps, folks. Yeah. To our sponsor, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> no sponsor at all. There's no uh, sponsor. Anything else? Nope, that's yeah. it. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.